Let's please stand for the reading of the word, please. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can pull it up on your phone, open up your Bible, whatever. It's now on the screen. Amen. Hallelujah. Got a little convenience there. <laughs> Is it clear enough to see? Yeah. Amen. You should have been seeing us. We was fighting over backgrounds. No, I want this background. I want that background. I was like, no, it needs to be dark. It needs to be dark. <laughs> so we can see. Amen. All right. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Verses through five. This is going to be a heavy hitter today. And what I mean by that is buckle up. Buckle up. It's about to get real bumpy here. All right. It says, for though we walk, bless you. <laughs> for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Everybody say strongholds. strongholds. That goes to the next one here. We destroy arguments in every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge. Everyone say knowledge, knowledge. of God. And take every thought. Say every thought. Captive, say captive, captive, to obey Christ. Every thought captive to obey Christ. Bow your heads for a moment. Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God, I thank you right now for what you're about to do, for the word that's about to go forward, Lord. Lord, help every single person right now get this message. Get, speak to us, Holy Spirit. Show us how to live according to your ways, your virtues, Lord. Show us, Holy Spirit, move on the hearts and the minds of each believer here. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Take a seat. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A city held captive. A city held captive. You know, I was doing um, some research about uh, a city, a town, specifically, a countryside. Um, what we were talking about the other week in our last little deliverance session when we spoke about Jesus and how, you know, he dealt with a town where the man or several people were demonized, correct? And we talk about, you know, strongholds and what people don't know is strongholds are not just some would think are biblically fortresses. OK, they're fortresses that were developed when people will go to war or a town would fortify themselves whenever there was an enemy coming. Whenever there was an enemy or potential threat, they would fortify these areas, right? They would build walls and things like that to keep things from coming in, correct? When we talk about strongholds now, the Apostle Paul was saying that our warfare is not going to battle like it used to be. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody here. Our warfare, the way we used to do things when we used to knuckle up with people, if they get a little, you know, he's like, you feel froggy? Come on, go jump, right? We used to come at people a certain way <laughs> and be like, let's go down, let's rock, right? I remember people, uh, after school fights, man, oh man, we used to line up for after school fights. Be like, fight, fight, fight. They'd be this group, that group. They'd be like, four o'clock, three o'clock. They'd be giving dates now. Three o'clock, see you after school. Bus number four, we gonna handle this, right? And then they talk for like five minutes and either they be so close to each other, look like they about to kiss, right? I think one time one of us pushed somebody's head and just collided right in front of them. Or they chest me the whole time. What you gonna do, what you gonna do, what you gonna do the whole time, right? He's like, like everybody getting all, all uh, extra and there's all bravado. And then it'd be like, 
a minute or 30 seconds of just wild swinging and everybody just <sighs> out of breath. Because ain't nobody really trained. Ain't nobody fighters like that. You know? I used to do martial arts, and I'm telling you right now, I would watch people and I'd be like, yeah, no. Nah. They would actually tell us, don't do nothing to nobody because you know more stuff. Like you are, because of your knowledge of what you know, you're responsible. I even had a friend of mine who was a boxer and he got in trouble. In fact, it, it messed him up so bad. He had one little moment of outburst and he was in, this is, this is gonna date us a little bit. He was in the line at a blockbuster video, all right? <laughs> and somebody cut his line because he was looking at the coming, coming soon and they cut in front of him. And he said, hey, partner. He said, what you doing? Like, he was with his girlfriend at the time. And she was pregnant too. And that little moment changed his life. He can either A, walk away and not worry about it. B, stand still and just take the, the insults. Or C, go nuts. What do you think he did? C, he went nuts. Because he's straight from the hood. He from the, I don't know, maybe a few of y'all know where the bottoms is. But I'm just saying. Some of us, I'm from a part of, East, of West Oakland, lower bottoms. He from East Oakland. And I'm just trying to tell you right now, nobody was going to come at him a certain way. And this is just in a blockbuster. And they went right in front of him. And it was two dudes, right? And they basically said, like, hey, you know, we don't care who you with. We can handle this outside. And he said, babe, go, go and purchase this. Oh, let, let, me, let me just rock with them outside for a moment. She told him no. It changed his life. When he was outside, now he's a trained boxer, you understand? He knows that he can't encounter in war that way. But what did he end up doing? He, he handled the first guy pretty quick. Then the second guy, he knocked smooth out. But he knocked him so hard that when he fell down, he hit his head on the pavement. And literally this guy had like brain like trauma, like straight up was in the hospital for like literally a whole year. And guess where my friend spent a whole year? Jail. Not just jail, they transferred him to San Quentin. He missed everything. His daughter being born the whole nine. One moment of fighting the wrong way. Thinking that this fight is really carnal, it's not carnal guys. The fight that we're fighting is spiritual. In every little moment and decision we make, we have to operate in the spirit. We have to operate according to the word of God. And I remember that and I thought to myself, man, he didn't tell me about all the stuff that he was doing while he was in prison and all that stuff. And literally how they would purposely put him next to people that had like a life sentence to see. Because they don't care. They gonna flex, they gonna jump, whatever. You making some spread, it don't matter. They're going to try to check you and keep you in that what? State of prison. They try to keep them in that situation. Now, obviously, he got out. But the thing about that there is I thought to myself, man, one decision, one way of battling can change your life. The Bible says our weapons are warfare. How we engage one another, when you're really in the body of Christ, it shouldn't be carnal. You should not be fighting. You're like, oh, I'm going to protect my territory. I'm going to protect my... No, you need to humble yourself. You need to calm down. You need to wage war the way that God wants you to wage war. Amen? Amen. So a city held captive. A city held captive. The Bible says here that strongholds are fortresses. What they eventually become are ways of thinking. Whether you know it or not, all of us have some type of strongholds in us, some type of ways of thinking that capture you. They hold you down. What the enemy does is he builds up fortresses in our mind, emotional fortresses, things that are connected to our pain, our loss, our trauma, all types of things. He literally builds up real estate. So there's ways of thinking that God is saying, hey, do you know that we, don't, we no longer fight this way? We fight 
our weapons don't come from this earthly realm. Our weapons come from God above. He says, come from heavy. They're mighty in God for the what? Pulling down the destruction of strongholds. The destructions of mental fortresses of the mind. And God is trying to tell us today, what is captivating you? What is really captivating you? Because this spiritual warfare, guys, is here. It's here. Every action that you do always comes from a thought. We are literally brought by our thoughts. We're going to see what our master, Lord Jesus, how he deals with this. But I want you guys to see this last part of this in this verse. Can you go right back? It says, we destroy arguments and every opinion, every way of thinking against the what? Knowledge of God. Are you fighting against things that come against the truth? of who you are in God? Or are you just accepting it and letting that mental prison just stay within you? Are you saying, God, investigate what's going on inside of me. Investigate what's going through my mind. It says, take every thought captive to the what? The Bible says the obedience to obey Christ. Your thoughts should be captivated by Christ not by anything else. Your own thoughts and these ways of thinking should be completely dismantled and destroyed by the truth of God's word. If it comes against God's word, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a lie. It was meant to be a, a mental prison inside of your head, a fortress. We're going to see this here, how Christ Jesus dealt with these things. Captivity. Captivity is not just somebody being just demonized, y'all. Captivity comes with fortresses built in the mind. Ways of thinking that don't come from God whatsoever. We have to see what the city held captive was all about. Here's the next verse. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. It says, they came to the other side of the sea. This is Jesus and the disciples. The Sea of Galilee, by the way. It says, to the country or the city of the Gerasenes. Some, some people say the Gadarenes. There's a debate about that. And let me just give you a little hint of the Gadarenes, this city. Okay? Do you know this city was walled off? From everyone else. It was walled off. They built up walls and were at a certain distance for a reason. They kept to their own, they did their thing, whatnot, right? But they were walled off, and the way that this countryside was set up were they weren't necessarily fortified like a military, but they were in such a way where they 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 had that that um, they, they put up walls in order to make sure people knew, hey, kind of stay out. Stay out from here. Don't come here. You guys ever walk up to places, and, and I, I go out to the countryside sometimes because people build up custom homes, and I feel like I got, here's what I hate about Google and, and GPS. <laughs> You'll be driving, and it'll literally give you another direction, and it'll say, go up this mountain and turn here. And then I'm literally like, this thing says no trespassing, but it's telling me to take a right. And I'm like, okay, do I listen to the GPS, or do I listen to that sign that says no trespassing? You know? I'm thinking to myself, I don't think I'm going to go past that sign. Because if I go past that sign, now I'm dealing with a bunch of people that are not expecting me to be there, correct? This city was not expecting people to be there like that, right? They, off, they had a reason why the area was walled up or put aside, at least that part of the countryside. So keep that in mind because the Holy Spirit is going to reveal some things, all right? It says, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat... Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean 
spirit. Go to the next one. He lived, he lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart. He broke them apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. So the town tried to deal with him, right? It wasn't something that they were unaware of, but they handled the situation incorrectly. They thought they can use force, but that type of force was not going to work. Amen? It says, no one had the strength, everyone say the strength, to subdue him. Next verse. It says, night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, what have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Other translations say, do not torment me before time. Have you come to torment us? Before time. It says, For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Out the gate, Jesus was handling business. Out the gate, he was doing spiritual warfare. He was not operating from the carnal standpoint, but from the spiritual standpoint. For not we wrestle not, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. But what we're wrestling with is spiritual things in high places. Things that are trying to torment and contaminate humanity. And he says, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country or out of the city. Okay, stop right there. As we go this, you got to understand, why did he say don't send them out of the country? Don't go out of the city. Don't go out of this region. Because misery loves company. These things know that they can dwell in that space. Whatever principality, whatever was over that region, that's what they were doing. Because there were strongholds already set in place in the minds of the people. And the Lord wants to show you guys this. I had a man of God tell me before. He said, you think, he said, you think we're just, he said, don't be commanding against principalities. He said, do you know where you're at? He said, that's for Mark, a Mark uh, uh, Michael the archangel. That's for like Gabriel, you know? That's for the angelic. They, they warfaring up there. Not you. Sit your butt down. I have people say, I astral projected to the third heaven and I was warring with. No, you was not doing that. Stop. Don't even astral project at all. Hear me in the spirit. Don't do that. You get in sleep paralysis, you need prayer. Hear me in the spirit. Okay? You should not be in a place of, oh, I don't know if I'm awake or I'm, uh, no, no, no. I'm telling you right now, I got filled with the Holy Ghost, never had sleep paralysis ever in my life again. I had somebody try to ask her project on me, though. And that thing, it was sitting right near my bed. I thought it was like a dream within a dream. You know, you wake up and you think like you're awake, but you're like, nah, something a little different, you know? And I was looking at that thing. That thing looked like my sister, like my older sister. And it smiled at me. You know what I did? I choked it. <clears throat> right away. I choked it. I said, don't you ever show up here. So if it was a demon or it was actually my sister, don't matter. I choked it out. I let it know, hey, you ain't jumping in my dreams. We ain't doing that. I'm a child of God. We, you ain't, it ain't never happened again. They, they probably passed the words that, hey, he be choking. He be, <laughs> he be punching. He be, like, he actually fights back. Ah, uh, y'all know where I'm going with this. Come on. How do I fight back? I fight back because I know my authority. I fat back because I understand that my weapons of warfare are not like this, but it's spiritual. It's how I deal with it. 
Christ was showing us something. We're going to unpack this. Amen. Are y'all are y'all ready for this? I want to make sure y'all know we're about to go a little more deeper here. Y'all y'all get in the edge. Y'all about knee deep right now. We're going to get waist deep. And the moment y'all gonna be like this. Y'all need a little life. <laughs> Throw a thing out for y'all. Be like, oh, no, we don't need. Let's unpack this a little bit because there's some nuggets here in the spirit. Y'all got to get it. OK, it says. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country, meaning in that region, that city, they wanted to stay there. They wanted to stay there so bad. What happens? He says, now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside and they begged him. They begged Jesus. It said they said what? It said, send us to the pigs. Let us enter them. Basically, don't send us to where we're supposed to go. Send us where we want to go. Where they're supposed to go is into the abyss. But he said, you're going to send us to the abyss before time, before we get judged. Y'all going to hear this in the spirit. The authority of Christ Jesus is amazing. Next one. He says, so he gave him, sorry. So he gave him permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd numbering about 2,000 rushed down to steep bank. Wait a second. A legion was 7,000 Roman soldiers. 7,000 demonic spirits can occupy one man? That had to fill up a whole lot of space. One man held that, and now 2,000 what? Pigs. That's a lot of bacon. Amen? That's a whole lot. Pepperoni and all that. I'm just saying. That's, that's a lot. That's not like three or two. I think in our mind we think like, you know, have y'all ever been on a pig farm? I ain't never been on a pig farm, but I can tell you, I've watched some of that stuff. I, bought, I passed a few a long time ago. You know there's some areas in, uh, in Las Vegas where they get, like, the scraps of everybody's, uh, do y'all know that? The, the, the scraps, literally, of all these uh, buffets that everybody be straight gluttonous and eating and overeating because that's what everybody do. They go to Vegas and they go crazy, Sin City, blah, blah, blah. They eat all to the food comes out of their nostrils. They waste and all that stuff, but all that waste actually goes to these pig farms and they just gobble it up. They slurp everybody's nastiness and they just mix it all up and then they just go to town. It's a business. It's a business, it's a big business too, having animals. So 2,000 of these pigs were on the bank side and what happened? The demons had to say, hey, we got to deposit. We got to divide it up because ain't all of us going to fit into one. We got to break this thing up. They broke up. Now what happened? Pigs gone mad. They rushed down to the steep bank into the sea and drowned into the sea. What does the demon really want to stay in a pig for? They don't want to stay there. They were like, we just need to transfer. We just need to, we know the rules. Hop into this, kill this thing. Now we're released. Now we can figure out and see what's happening with the rest of the town. How do they enter, y'all? Strongholds, mindsets, ways of thinking that are against the knowledge of God. Ways of thinking that Christ does not permit. God wants your ways of thinking to shift. God wants your ways of thinking to now be into the obedience, meaning in God, if I have a thought, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving my thoughts to you. That's how deep your relationship gets with God. I'm telling you right now, I can sleep well. I had some moments right before I went to sleep and I could start feeling like this moment of anxiety coming over me. And I said, ah, you ain't doing that. You know, if anybody's ever dealt with anxiety, y'all understand what anxiety, what it does. It first starts with your mind. And then all of a sudden you can start feeling like this heaviness right here in the center. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Does anybody really know that? It's, it's like this, it's a tangible heaviness that starts to come over. 
You don't even feel like you can breathe. People have said it. It does with, uh, I think my wife talked about it. One time I, I got so anxious and they said it's a, she, she mentioned it's like a vagus, I think it's a vagus nerve or something right here in the middle. I'm telling you, it's real. I thought I was having a heart attack one time. And I put my thing and it was like, no, you ain't having no heart attack. You know, but I was just like, what is, what is this? Then I prayed and I said, God, your word says that to be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. That's what Philippians says. But it says this. Pray about everything. Amen. Make your requests known to God. I started making my thoughts known to God and saying, Lord, this is what your word says. I want to sleep well. Whatever this pain that's in my chest, whatever this pain that's in my mind, please remove it now. And he did. I went back to sleep and I swept, slept really well. He even talked to me. He was talking to me in my dreams, talking to me. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He'll talk like that. Are you willing to listen? You're so, you're so used to giving your thoughts attention instead of giving your thoughts unto God. Come on. That's the Holy Ghost. I asked the Holy Ghost to tell me, say, hey, tell them exactly what I want to tell them. All right. Let's look at this. It says, the herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. So the herdsmen out in the wilderness or out in that, that farmland, they went and they started telling they started telling what happened. They said the city and in the country. So everywhere. It says, and the people came to see what it was that happened. Now, let's keep going forward. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon possessed man. The one who had the legion sitting there clothed and in his what? Right mind. Everyone say right mind. Does anybody want to be in their right mind? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to make sure I stay in the right mind. It says, and they were what? Afraid. Woo, wait a second. Hold on. They were afraid? Now we're going to get, now we're going to start unpacking some stuff. So the city saw this man that they knew the whole time. They constantly put him in chains. Where'd the chains come from? You think he bolted himself? He tied himself? They said, no. They kept trying in their own efforts to keep this man down. And guess where they put him off? In the tombs. He was hanging out in the tombs where death, decay was at. He was isolated. He was isolated from everyone else. Hanging out in the tombs. Tombs are not places to hang out, y'all. Places where there are dead things are not the place to head out. Whatsoever. It says, and those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. So they talked about both, right? It says, and they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. Let's hold on there just for a second. And they begged Jesus to depart from their region. I'm going to unpack this for a second. Why would you beg Jesus to get out of town? He's healing. He's doing miracles. He's setting the captives free, literally in this moment. But they're saying, get out of town. Get out of town. Did y'all catch this? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving on me right now. The city was held captive. Not just by demonic influence, y'all. But by strongholds in their mind. Guys, they were more worried about the pigs than the freedom that just was received by this man. Can I speak in the Holy Ghost for a moment? Some of us are so concerned about the things that we lost instead of the things that we found. They found Jesus and they said, get out of town. They didn't discern it. They were held captive. The, the demons knew who they were. The demons knew who Jesus was. They said, son of God, do 
we look at Jesus and recognize him for who he is, supreme, authorized, all authority, all power? Or do you just look at, oh, Jesus just helps me a little bit here and there? No, Jesus should be the author and finisher of your faith. He should be the one that you look upon and you want to receive freedom. It's coming from Jesus. You want to receive healing. It's coming from Jesus. But we are worried about the town. We're worried about what they're going to say. We're worried about the things that we're going to lose. Lord Jesus, don't touch my pigs. Don't touch the stuff that is, is allowing me to get some type of income, allowing me to get some type of career, allowing something that I've invested in. Don't touch that, Jesus. Get out of town. They didn't recognize what was happening. God wants to make sure that we recognize what's happening here. That our perception is that we see him the way that we're supposed to see him. God, keep my pigs around. And God's like, I just set, I just set you free. I just set this man free. You can't even recognize the freedom that just happened, the spiritual freedom that just took place. They were more concerned about the bacon, literally leaving. All they thought about was what they lost and not what they found. That was in their heart. That was in their mind. The demons recognize Jesus for who he is. Do you recognize Jesus for who he is? Do, is he really? He fell to his knees. Even being demonized, he fell to his knees and recognized the authority. All the disciples standing up. Y'all don't understand. He was walking this earth. And in the spirit, they recognized what was happening. We don't recognize Jesus when we need to recognize him. He's supreme over all creation, over everything seen and unseen. But we worried about pigs here, guys. They was like, get out of town. We losing money. Get out of town. My life is just getting worse. The moment I start focusing on you, you came in and you came into town and messed everything up. God is saying, I didn't mess things up. I'm cleaning up the mess that's here. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. God is going to clean up the mess that's in that town, that's in that city. Them fortresses in your mind, he wants to tear down. Those ways of thinking that get you focused more on the pigs and not actually who he is, he wants to tear down. That's what he wants out of our lives. Let's keep reading. It says, as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed or demonized, it says, begged him that he might be with him. When you're really desperate and you know you're set free, you're going to be begging to be with Jesus. You're not going to want anything else behind you. You're not going to want the chains, the fetters, the town. He said, I want to leave town. He said, I know they kicked you out, but I want to leave town with you. Are you ready to leave town with Jesus? For real, are you really ready to leave town with Jesus? To take everything that he has for you. It says, and he did not permit him. It wasn't time. He had to be with his disciples. He says, but he gave him instruction. He said, go where? Home. Hallelujah. Ooh, he said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. And how he has mercy. He had mercy on you. Why are we afraid to go home and tell it how it really is, y'all? Tell this thing how it really is. That God has captivated your heart. That he set you free from some stuff and you don't have to hide no more. You can get out of them chains, get out of the tomb, walk in the newness of life. Recognize who he is in your life. But he didn't just want them to roll with them. He said, you know what? Even better. Go back to your family and tell them what's up. Go back to the people closest to you and tell them about what I did for you. That's what the Bible says. We're overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our what? Testimony. Everyone say testimony. 
And he says, and he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and everyone marveled. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him and he was beside the sea. Strongholds or fortresses in the mind. God told me to make sure that every point that I was given, that he, this, this thing is ingrained. Hear me in the spirit. It says isolation will keep you in bondage in darkness. You got to stay free, remain free and stay connected. Don't isolate yourself. That whole city was isolated. That whole city didn't even recognize. They did not want the help. Isolation will keep you in bondage straight up. It'll reintroduce it. You got to stay out of darkness. Walk in the kingdom of his dear son. It says you must continue to get the things out of your life that are causing torment. That is a process. But you have to yield to Jesus in doing that. It's not going to be anything else. I'm telling y'all right now, it ain't going to be the bank account. It's not going to be the zeros in the account. Trust me. It says stop focusing on the pigs. Start focusing on what? Stop focusing on what you lost. Stop focusing on the pigs, y'all. Them pigs, you don't need them. It says, focus on who you found, Jesus. Let him tear down any part of town or the walls that the enemy built in your mind. So you need to start saying, God, tear these walls down. Tear these cities down, all the real estate that the enemy has put in my mind. All the ways of thinking. You got to know Christ is supreme. He holds the keys to unlock the chains from your prison. Period. Point blank. And you got to share that with the people that you're around. They are in prison. You know they're in prison. If you are set free, tell other people that you are set free so they can be set free. Amen? He says, the demons see Christ as supreme. How about you? How about you? Are you looking at him as supreme? Is he supreme in your life? You can wear the hat. You can wear the shirt. But is he really supreme in your life? Do you recognize Christ as supreme fully? Thank you, Holy Ghost. This scripture says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For him, Jesus, all things are created. Everyone say all things. all things in heaven and in earth. It says visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. So whether it be in the seen and the unseen, God is over all of it. Jesus is over all of it. What is too hard for God? Nothing. What is too hard for God? Nothing. Amen. So everything you've been thinking that's been captivating your mind, God is saying, give it to me. Now, I should be cap you should be captured in my love. You should be captured in my power. Do you recognize who Christ is? Is it the career? Is it the job? Is it the friends? Whatever it may be. Oh, I don't want to lose this. God is saying, I have better. My way is better. He's saying, I created everything you see and everything you don't see, which means the reason why we're here is not for us. It's for him. It's what he wants out of our lives. Not what we want out of our lives. That's the shift. That's the transition that most of us are afraid of. God, what do you want out of my life? Every time we pray, it was always me, 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 me. Lord, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? Then finally I asked God, I said, God, what do you want out of me? What do you want out of me? Not what I want from you, but what do you want from me? Because if you're really Lord, you're Lord. You can go back. It says, all things are created through him and for him. Next. It says, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
It says, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be what? Preeminent, meaning in God, Christ is over everything, y'all. He is beyond our light bills. He is beyond our sdg e bill. He's beyond all of that stuff. Taxes, the whole nine. Debt, whatever we got going on in our life. He's beyond that, y'all. He's over the seen and the unseen. Do y'all understand how this works? When you pray things to God, there's a message sent and angels and things, boom, 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 moving all at the same time. That's what happened to Daniel, the prophet. And we spoke about this yesterday. But things are moving, whether you know it or not, on your behalf. You went there and sent that message to God. What do you think? You just look at it as a male. Go, man. No. But God don't read. He don't send this stuff. Do you know that Daniel said, the angel said, the moment you started to utter, he didn't even get to finish the prayer. They already knew. Why? Because he, what? He knows your thoughts from what? Afar. Come on, Holy Ghost, speak. Before you even say what you're saying, he already knows what's going on in your mind and in your heart. In fact, the Bible says the Holy Spirit that will lead and guide you to all truth actually searches the deep things of God. And he starts to line up. That's why I've been telling y'all, y'all praying times, go for it, go all out. If you haven't prayed in tongues, you better start. Keep asking every day, Lord, I want to pray in tongues. I want to pray in tongues. I want to get built up. I want to get built up. I want to speak mysteries to you. So treat it as something light. Pursue everything. Grab a hold of it. Say, God, I want everything. I don't want to leave nothing. No crumbs. I'm going to get everything. Crumbs and pennies. The whole nine. When you recognize who Christ is, you're going to get desperate. You're going to be like, whoa, he done broke them chains off. Broke the chains off my, my hands. Broke the chains of sin off of my mind. Broke the chains of, of deception in my heart. He broke chains off of your marriage, broke chains off of your family. Brought the chains of death on your life. You should have died. Should have died in the hospital. Says Jesus, for in him all the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. Guys, everything is running through Christ. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, everything is running through Christ. He is the visible image of the invisible God. The Holy Spirit comes in his name, in his authority. It says, and through him we reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who were once what? Alienated. And hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. When we was doing our evil stuff, God was saying, you are an alien to this. You are like, you are not in this kingdom. You are not in this country. You are a city that was held captive. You shouldn't remain that way. He's saying he is now, everyone say now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. It says, in order to present you, he did all this to make sure that you are now presented holy and blameless. Everyone say holy, holy. not sinful. God is trying to make you holy through his blood, through that water, and also through the spirit. He's sanctifying you. He's separating you. That's why it feels uncomfortable to your flesh. That's why your mind is at war. It's like, I want to do this. And God's thoughts are saying, you know, you got to literally let the Holy Spirit drop kick everything that comes in your mind. Tear it down. Say, Holy Spirit, my bad way of thinking needs to get destroyed right now. I'm giving all my thoughts to you. I'm giving all my desires to you. My way of thinking ain't going to work. It won't work. He doesn't want you to be a city held captive. Focusing on the pigs, focusing on what you lost. Instead of focusing on who you really found. Amen? It says, in order to present you holy and blameless, Jesus is going to present us, y'all, 
holy and blameless. Meaning that nothing can, so no one can say nothing about you. And above what reproach? Before who? Him. He's going to be like, look, what do y'all think about the ascension? What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be declared. It says some are going to be raised up to everlasting life. And others are going to be raised up to everlasting contempt. I don't want to be the one raised up in no everlasting contempt. That means that's why he said in the kingdom, you're going to hear two things. Well done, good and faithful servant. Or you're going to hear evil, wicked servant, evil, lazy servant. You were supposed to do this and you didn't do it. Now, get out of my presence. Those that are workers of iniquity, workers of hidden sins. You didn't want to, you didn't want to be in it like that. You didn't obey. You didn't trust. You rebelled the whole time. You didn't want to walk in your freedom. You want to be held captive. He said, if indeed, everyone say this, if indeed you continue, say continue in the faith. Do y'all catch that? It didn't say start. It said finish. It said continue. It said endure. You got to run this race. You have to run this race. Not your mama, not your daddy. You have to run this race. You have to continue in the faith. Stable and steadfast. Not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. Don't let nobody shake you up with anything new. It says, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Please stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God truly wants you out of darkness and into his light. He wants us out of the tombs. He wants us shackle free the whole nine. No more playing games and saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to walk in this thing. And then you already have ways of thinking that held you down. This is as serious as it is, y'all. Some of you guys really, really got set free from some stuff. God's saying, don't hold that back from your family. Don't hold that back from your friends. Tell it how it is. Don't walk around it. Get right, right in their face with it. Say, this is what happened. This is what happened to me. All I know is something changed in my life. Like the blind man said, he said, look, I don't know what's going on with Jesus, but all I know, I was blind, and now I can see. That's all I know. You got to walk in that type of confidence. I can tell every single person, I don't care where you're at in your life and your spiritual walk. God is working with you. God is dealing with you. I don't care what happened last week. I'm talking about right now in this moment, God is working on you. Let him do that. Start changing your mind. You can get anything out of this message. Embrace God. Know he's supreme. Stop focusing on the pigs. Stop focusing on the material things. The things that you lost. Focus on who you found. Because when you find him, you find you. Ooh, That's something to rejoice right now. When you find Jesus, you really found who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can give him glory for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, I want you guys to just soak in what God is saying here. If you know, now we're not going to be long because I'm going to keep it real, 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 uh, what do you call it with you? I want everybody to do this. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. No, seriously, raise your hands. By this here, you're saying, God, I don't want any more strongholds and any more captivity in my mind. 
And I'm going to pray this prayer and I want you guys to have this heart posture. And you speak out and confess it yourselves. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent. I want everything you have for me. Every stronghold, every chain, every type of bondage in my, lo- in my life, set me free right now from all the bad ways of thinking in my mind. Lord Jesus, I will no longer focus on what I lost, but who I found. Jesus, tear every stronghold in my life down right now. Build up a new city, a new mind, a new country, a new kingdom inside of me right now. Holy Ghost, have your way with my life. Jesus, you're supreme. You're the author and finisher of my faith. I need your love and your joy and your peace. Set me apart to live holy and righteous in your sight so that when I see you, I will be like you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the glory. Hallelujah. Give him the honor. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk into the light right now. Walk into the goodness right now. Walk into the goodness. Hallelujah. You confess that, you know that God is doing something right now inside of you. Inside of you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, I thank the Lord for everybody that came today. I know this is a little bit different. The Lord told me to do it this way. But I will say that everybody has my number Every time, if you guys ever want to text and get in contact with us, you can do that. If you don't feel like texting me, you can text my wife, you know. Um, But I will say this, that God wants everybody to be refreshed and built up. Amen. And so we're going to pray you guys out completely just for protection and guidance. It's really good to see every single person's face. Praise God. You went down in that water. Amen. Daniel. (laughs) That was beautiful. We need to encourage everyone else. If you have not gotten baptized into Jesus' name, get baptized into Christ. We don't believe in it as just a little symbol. It's actually a reality. If you want to get rebaptized, you can talk to us about truly what it looks like, what repentance looks like. This is us being obedient. It's a part of your faith. Christ commanded us. I don't not do things that Christ doesn't command. Amen. I listen to him. We should be ob- obedient to everything he says. Amen? Amen. And so right now, I'm just going to ask everybody as we close out in prayer, just to embrace one another, have a conversation the whole night. But I will tell you this, that the Lord is moving on this group. Believe in who you are here. Even if moments where you feel like, I don't really see it, Lord, don't worry about it. He said, our, our, we said what? We walk by what? Faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Not by sight. Amen. Not by sight. God is saying, believe in the unseen. Believe in who you are, how I see you, how I perceive you. Amen. So let's look to the Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you for these people, Lord. I thank you for what transpired today, Lord. I ask right now, Lord Jesus, for supernatural growth, Lord, for complete transformation, Lord, of hearts and minds right now. Lord, as they leave this place, Lord Jesus, let your presence not leave them, Lord Jesus. Let them operate, Lord Jesus, not in any type of spirit of confusion or doubt, but actually the promising trust in you, Lord, that they will trust in you, Lord Jesus, with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding, Lord. Guide their footsteps right now, Lord, as they leave, Lord Jesus. Let let your power, your protection, and your supernatural grace and favor, Lord, be with them in all they do and say. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us. God bless y'all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, praise God. (laughs) Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord.
Praise the Lord. Let's be out of here by 150. <laughs> yep. 